day, it's Nathaniel Whiston here and welcome to another episode of Sporting Heroes of West Anglia. Today I'm travelling to the town of Chatteris. It's west of Ely, east of Ramsey and south of Wimblington. It's in northeast Cambridgeshire and it's in West Anglia. Boxing is the reason I'm coming up to Chatteris today. In the 1930s and 1940s, one of the most popular British boxers was a man by the name of Eric Boone, and he was born and brought up in the town of Chatteris in Cambridgeshire in West Anglia, and he's perhaps the most famous, yeah, he probably is the most famous boxer to come out of West Anglia so far and to the best of my knowledge. So that's why I'm going to Chatteris, I'm going to have a walk around the town, have a look what's going on there, have a stroll around the fens and talk about Eric Boone. For those of you interested in my journey today, I'm travelling on the A1, the Great North Road. If I fell asleep and kept going, I'd hit Scotland. If I fell asleep, I'd more likely hit the Central Reservation. Boxing is not a sport I know a great deal about. It's not something that's ever appealed to me really. I know that I wouldn't like to step into a ring and get punched repeatedly. And I don't get much enjoyment out of seeing people getting punched repeatedly. Actually, there's a few people I'd get a lot of joy out of seeing them get punched repeatedly. If only they'd take up boxing. Boone is obviously known around these parts, but he's also in the history books because his match against match, do you have match boxing match? His fight, his bout against Arthur Danahar on the 23rd of February 1939 was the first televised boxing match anywhere ever in the entire world. And it was also shown in cinemas as well for people who didn't have televisions I expect and nowadays you see people go to the cinema to watch musicals and operas and events like that well they did it first with boxing so all those people who go to watch Deflate a Mouse and they're sipping their, their champagne um, they should be thanking Eric Boone and Arthur Danahar because they kicked off that trend of, of showing events live through cinemas. All the road signs on the way today, none of them say Chatteris, they all say March, which is another Cambridgeshire town, but it's very confusing to just see March on a sign. It's like you're, you're traveling through time. March there, April here, November there. If I wasn't of sound mind, it would be very confusing. I will say this about boxing, the good thing is that anyone can do it. You don't need any special equipment, you can just find someone who wants a fight and then you start punching each other. I suppose you need to buy gloves, they can't be that expensive can they? And you need to wear boots and shorts, but well, those shorts, sometimes they look kind of silky or satin, don't they? So that could be expensive. I suppose you could just get together, you and a mate, don't even get the equipment, just in your clothes, don't even get gloves and just start hitting each other. Actually, bare, bare knuckle fighting, that, that sounds really bad. I don't recommend doing bare knuckle fighting. No, if you, if you do want to get into a fight with somebody, then look for your local boxing club and do it that way instead that's that's the best way to to vent your aggression beside me the land is very very flat i'm on the road into chatteris now in the heart of fenland these are all fens around me and it would be a very different story if i was traveling here in the 1600s because in those days this was all water and chatteris was an island and then they drained the fens in the 17th, 18th centuries. So it looks like it does now with all this land here. 
and what a relief that is because I wouldn't have fancied coming here by boat. I once took a ferry from Fishguard in Wales to Ireland and I had the most awful seasickness. I mean, I don't want to get too graphic here, but it was just dreadful. Never again. I would never do it again. And fortunately for me, Chatteris is no longer an island. It's all roads here and my journey to the town is going very smoothly. I can park in here. And we're here. We're in Chatteris. When Boone had his matches going on in London, it was said thousands of people used to leave from Chatteris and go down on the train. And there were so many of them that they had to put extra trains on. Well, nowadays there is no train station in Chatteris. It was shut down in the 60s because of Dr. Beechin. Incidentally, if you do want to come to Chatteris, I suggest you drive or take a bus. They're highly defendable. This is where Boone lived in Chatteris. This is Burnsfield Street. I've just come from West Street up there in Chatteris and walked down here because I want to get access to the football ground. You're probably wondering, Nathaniel, why on earth have you come to the football ground? You said Boone was a boxer. Well, he was, but he once had a fight here on this football pitch. I don't know the name of this ground, but it was sometime, I think in the forties, they stuck a ring in the middle of the field and he had a boxing match with someone. Boone was in 119 fights and he won 92 of them. I compared that to some of the boxing greats. Muhammad Ali, he only won 56. Rocky Marciano, who's supposed to be the greatest boxer ever, he only won 49. And if we go to more recent times, Floyd Mayweather, he's currently on 49 wins as well. So Eric Boone was way above that. The only guy I could find who won more was Sugar Ray Robinson, and he won 172. But he was a middleweight, and Eric Boone was a lightweight. And there's a lot more people who are middleweights. Think about it, when you go to a clothes shop as a man, what size clothes do you buy? You buy medium or large. You don't buy small. So there's so much more competition in the middleweight division. There's so many more people who are that size, so there's more people to fight. Eric Boone, being a lightweight, there was not as many people to fight, so his record stands up with the best, in my opinion. As you can see, I'm out in the fens now. Very flat. Very long, straight roads. And it's out here that I believe Eric Boone would have come to train. He lived in Chatteris just over there. This is a perfect place to go and go for a run and spar and skip and do what boxers do. So I think he came out here. Boone had two nicknames as a fighter, Boy Boone and the Fen Tiger. I'm not sure why they chose a tiger because as you can see there are no tigers in the fens. If there were it wouldn't really be a huge problem because it's so flat around here I could see them for miles away. If a tiger suddenly appeared on the horizon I'd say I've got a good two to three minutes to make my escape. I could hide in a ditch or something. I know tigers run fast but I could still make it because it'd be so far away. Boone was constantly getting into fights in school, always scrapping with his fellow pupils in the playground. The teachers didn't look too kindly on this and often he faced the wrath of the head teacher with his cane. He used to protest to them, I like fighting, that's what I enjoy doing. And I can imagine his careers advice interview at school went very quickly. What do you enjoy doing Eric? I like fighting. Well. You should be a boxer then. All right, I will. And it was at age 18 when he had the biggest night of his life and he became the British lightweight champion. He beat Dave Crowley. And the scenes were so frenzied at the end. There was a bunch of his fans from Chatteris. They all piled into the ring and the journalists were agog at how frenzied the crowd had become and how much joy they had in sharing in Boone's victory. Boone and Crowley went on to be 
good friends and in the 1970s when Crowley's eyesight was deteriorating, Eric actually offered one of his eyes to Crowley. This isn't like giving someone a kidney or a lung. Your eye, that's something you really need. And he was willing to give it up to Crowley. Crowley turned him down, probably thinking it was too big a gesture. But Boone, Eric Boone, a man who would give you one of his eyes if he could. Perfect place to hide from a tiger. Tiger running from over there. In we go. The tiger would just pass straight over it, wouldn't see us, we'd hide in there. Then we'd get up and carry about all day. Easy peasy. This would be a perfect place to have a boxing match. You could fit so many people here. If you just stuck a boxing ring in the middle, get some stands, there's so much room here. And for parking too, just tarmac some of it. That might annoy the farmers and would disturb the land. So, well, that's probably why they don't do it. Boone had a reputation of being a womanizer, a playboy. Towards the end of his career, he found that he had no other trade to go into. All he'd known all his life was boxing. So he kept getting into the ring and unfortunately got beat very often towards the end. He decided to try and get into movies and he had a brief acting career. He appeared in Carry On Sergeant and You Lucky People with Tommy Trinder. And that was a trailblazing thing to do by Brune because of course we know about other boxers going into show business. Frank Bruno famously did a few pantos and you've got people who've been in the Rocky films. Uh, Mike Tyson, I think he's been in a couple of films. Lennox Lewis, has he been in anything? Maybe. Either way, any boxer who's been in a film, I think, has to give credit to Eric Boone for starting that, for doing it first with the carry on and the Tommy Trinder, you lucky people, he did all that. Good for walkers, good for walkers. Look at that incline. Practically nothing. A degree, perhaps two. So if you fancy a good walk, this is the place to come. If you don't want to bring your poles, if you've got bad knees, you don't like going over steps or hills and all that, the fence is perfect. Look behind me, flat as a pancake. I thought it would be quite quiet in the fence, but you've got cars and lorries this road occasionally you've got a racket coming from over there you've got the farm buildings and machinery going off I think because it's so flat the sound just travels here's a car coming now so I've got to come off the road if you go to Switzerland Austria quiet as a mouse around there because of all the mountains shielding the noise but here this comes straight through heading home on the A1 Again, the Great North Road, except I'm going south now. Do you call it the Great South Road? Especially if you live up north, if you're from Scotland or near Newcastle, York, those places on the A1, do you still call it the Great North Road or do you call it the Great South Road? Do let me know. That was Chatteris, where I had a lovely walk through the town. And then the Fens, where I had another lovely walk as I talked about the life of British boxing lightweight champion, the Fen Tiger, Eric Boone. I'm going to have to go online now and look up some of his old fights, see him in boxing action. I'm sure he did West Anglia proud. That's it for today. I'm Nathaniel Whiston, and I hope to see you again next time for another episode of Sporting Heroes of West Anglia.